So this is another EOQ example, just to reinforce how to do EOQ. I think once you get EOQ, the other ones are, are relatively straightforward, so I thought I'd give you a second one. This is a question that is similar to the last one that I did. Uh, a local food processing firm uses 24,000 glass jars to produce gourmet jams and jellies per year, so their demand is 24,000. It costs the firm $60 each time it places an order for jars and the with the manufacturers. The inventory cost is $0.08 cents per jar per year. The stock has received four days after an order has been placed. No back orders are allowed. Assume 300 working days a year. Calculate the EOQ, optimum number of orders, optimal interval between orders, annual holding costs and ordering costs, total inventory cost. Uh, we'll do a, a diagram quickly just to show you what that looks like. Uh, calculate demand during lead time, calculate the inventory position, uh, and uh, which we discussed in the last video but we'll revisit. Uh, because of the space limitation, suppose the firm orders 5,000 jars at a time, what is the annual holding cost of this policy? So just understanding how that changes from EOQ. And the last one is the firm would prefer to order eight times per year but need to justify any change in order size. By how much would ordering costs need to be reduced to justify eight orders per year? So let's <coughs> go through that. So, question, we have demand is equal to 24,000. S is equal to $60. 300 days per year. Holding cost is equal to 0 0.08 and lead time is equal to 4. So first we do the EOQ. EOQ is equal to the square root of 2 times 24 times 60 divided by 0 0.08 is equal to 6,000 units at a time. So we order 6,000 <coughs> units at a time. Number of orders per year equals 24,000 divided by 6,000 equals 4 orders per year. Time between orders is equal to 300 days we work divided by four orders per year is equal to 75 days. So we order every 75 days. And total cost is equal to uh, Q over 2 times H plus Q, sorry, D over Q times S is equal to uh, 6,000 over uh, 2 times 0 0.08 plus uh, 24,000 divided by 6,000 times 60 is equal to, and this way is always a way to check if you've calculated correctly, 240 plus 240, if they're not equal you've not gotten a, an EOQ, is equal to 480. So the total cost of this inventory system is 480. That doesn't include acquisition costs, that is just the cost of ordering and holding that inventory and the EOQ gives you the negative, uh, the, 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 the minimal value. So if we just draw that, this is 6,000 here. <coughs> Excuse me. This is 240 here. This is 480 here. 
And so holding cost goes up linearly. So each additional uh, unit of ordering in increases the average inventory by half a unit with, uh, and then the cost goes up by half a unit times 0.08. So that's linear. The setup cost goes down as orders go up. And so we find the place where the two of those are equal and the total cost curve looks like this and is minimized at 480. So that's just conceptually what's involved in the EOQ model. The next question was what is demand over lead time? Demand over lead time is 80 times 4, where 80 is 24,000 divided by 300 days. So that is daily demand. And 4 days equals um, 320 units. So that's relatively straightforward. Your, inv your, uh, your reorder point is your when there's no uncertainty around demand, your reorder point is equal to demand times daily demand times lead time. An inventory position. Inventory position is immediately after order. An inventory position is simply inventory on hand plus pending in, uh, plus, plus orders placed is equal to 6,000, which is the order you placed, plus 320, which is your, your inventory right when you place it, is equal to 6,320. So, again, relatively straightforward. Then the question said, uh, because of space limitations, suppose the firm orders 5,000 jars at a time, what is the annual holding cost of this policy, annual ordering cost? What would be the co annual cost saved by shifting, shifting from 5,000 jars to the EOQ? So let's take a look at that. Uh, holding cost at 5,000 holding cost is equal to five thousand divided by two times point oh eight is equal to two hundred dollars and setup costs is equal to twenty four thousand divided by five thousand times sixty is equal to two 88. So total cost is equal to uh, 488 where before it was 480 so EOQ saves 8 bucks. So in fact you might argue that in that circumstance uh, you would be relatively indifferent if you really don't have the space eight bucks uh, a year isn't the end of the world and so you might be happy to accept that.
So the last question was, the firm would prefer to order eight times per year, but would need to justify any change in order size. By how much would ordering costs need to be reduced to justify eight orders per year? So, if we order eight times per year, our Q equals 24,000 divided by eight is equal to 3,000 units. And so uh, we know that 3,000 units would be our Q. And so we now have to figure out how much this order, uh, order uh, cost would need to be reduced to justify this. So we have to then say what would be for, for EOQ to be 3,000, what would setup cost have to be? And so we can go back, we can look at EOQ is equal to the square root of 2 times D times S over H. So Q is equal to 2DS over H. Q squared is equal to 2DS over H. Q squared H is equal to 2DS. And then Q squared H over 2D is equal to S. So uh, <clears throat> that just is simple algebra. We did some manipulation there. And so we can then go and calculate S is equal to 3000 squared times 0 0.08 divided by 2 times 24,000 which is just substituting in that formula. And we can solve that and we get 15. So in order for that to be the optimal quantity, our setup costs and nothing else change, our setup cost would have to be $15. It's currently 60 minus 15 is equal to 45. So setup cost would have to decrease by $45 to make that new policy work. So again, all we're doing is basic manipulation of the, of the same, uh, of the same um, formulas and, and it's a relatively straightforward process uh, to come up with these calculations. I hope these examples uh, help you work through any types of questions you might have on the EOQ.